Hello YouTube, and welcome to Tom Stad's Storytime, the show where I narrate my own original short stories and excerpts of novels. And this week's short story is... Meeting with Someone Unknown, Part 2. Enjoy! Asking myself in the reflection of my sliding door, should I go gay if things with Yulia don't work out? I mean, after all, I've always been more socially secure around other men. Suddenly, the craziest thing happened. By looking out into my backyard, I spot an honest to god Vol. I didn't even know that wolves even as inhabited this part of Germany. Part of me wanted to search for pest control in my area. Another, more curious part wanted me to go out and take a picture of it. It wasn't running around or sniffing anything, it just kind of stood there like a domesticated house pet. I got outside and nudged my way to the creature. I was sure not to provoke it. The plan was simple. Sneak up on it, get a picture, post it to Twitter, and get lots of likes. But as I was sizing him up, I noticed how big it was. The thing appeared to be up to my belly button in height, and I'm 180 centimeters tall. I found myself short of a meter from the creature. I opened up the camera and turned on the flash, you know how bad phone cameras are in low light. I go to steadily take the picture, the flash was on. The picture turned out fabulously, perfectly capturing the wolf standing in my backyard. A split second after the picture was taken, it twitched its ears and started snarling at me. Frightened, I backed slowly away, trying my best not to provoke it any more than I have. I also said, Easy, easy does it now. As soon as it started stalking me, I made a beeline to my house, but the wolf proceeded to chase me inside the house making me run around my living room, and it eventually had me in a deadlock. Its front claws were on my sofa and those piercing blue eyes were staring in my face. I tried beating it on the nose and yelled, Shoo! Shoo! I'm not your dinner! It yipped a little, but that didn't stop it from lunging at me, clawing at my backside, ripping seams into two layers of clothing, then it proceeded to dig its claws into me, and finally, it bit me in my side! Most horrifyingly, it howled briefly thereafter, and continued doing feral yelps as it dug its claws into my backside. It then got its claws out, put its paws on the ground, and simply crawled out where it came in. I was in terrible pain. In between the bite and the ceiling sharp pain of the claw marks, I did two things. Number one, I posted the picture on Twitter with the caption, The bastard, or bitch, that mauled me. The majority of the people who commented on such posts were trolls. That was until I commented pictures of my scratch wounds. My second thought was just how could a wolf that attacked me from the front result in claw marks in the back? Also, when it got its claws out of me, I could have sworn I saw human-like elbows on its foreleg. It happened really quickly and I could have easily have imagined it. I don't typically roleplay or fantasize about that sort of thing, but I still entertain the concept of me of being attacked by a werewolf. It wasn't a full moon, so that put me at ease. I tried calling my doctor, but I only got an answering machine, so I hung up. Got some bandages out of my medicine cabinet and applied them to my wounds. In bed, the claw marks were searing and impeding my ability to sleep. I did eventually sleep and I ended up having nightmares of people trying to sneak into my house to kill me. The next morning, I looked at the post and I saw that Yulia had commented, I think I should come to your house. I've got a secret to show you. It was posted three hours before I got up. I replied, sure, I'll text you my address. After a day of sitting around the house watching Netflix, I hear a car park in front of my house. It was four o'clock, 
and the familiar looking Volvo was outside. I got outside, or was still in my PJs, but I still greeted. Come in, come in, I said while opening the door for her. I noticed a bruise on her nose, so I asked about it. How did you get the bruise? She said, oh, I just slipped and hit my nose on the couch at home. I said, well, I got attacked by a wolf last night. Lydia Simon said, I saw. I meant I motioned her to go into my house, and she started acting weird. She looked absolutely glazed over and said, This place looks really familiar, like I've been here before. I politely said, Well, I'm sure a lot of homes look similar to mine. She asked, Were you doing anything? I replied, I've only been sitting around the house watching Sherlock all day. Julia said, well, that's nice. I'm more of a Doctor Who person myself. She proceeded to look at my PS3 and asked, What games do you like p playing? I said, Well, I like Mass Effect. I've also been really getting into Watch underscore Dogs af again after it sat on the shelf for the past year. I proposed, Would you like something to eat? And she humorously said, You'd be asking a whole host of different questions after I show you my secrets. I recalled, yeah, you did mention a secret on Twitter, and now I'm just plain curious. Yulia looked at me and said, okay, but it's kind of a strange one. Curious, I replied, oh, I like strange. She said, okay, but it's really weird. I was now nervous. What could this girl possibly be hiding? She then asked me the most conspicuous questions that a person could even ask. Are the, neighbors, are the neighbors home? I clinched and said, probably not. Why? She said, oh, no reason. A weird answer in very weird circumstances. And I said with a hint of fear, so are you going to tell me your secret? She said, it's kind of one of those things that you have to find out for yourself. I said, oh, okay, so can I see your secret? She went on to do something strange, yet arousing. She got up from the sofa and started taking her clothes off. I was aroused, but I was also getting a little concerned about what kind of secret it is. So I asked, please don't tell me you have herpes or something. She was now butt naked and didn't have anything that would indicate an STD. What happened next, I swear, was like a trip to crazy town. Yulia's features gradually started shifting into something beastier. Hands started becoming callous and clawed. Her body was growing grayish fur. Her feet shifted to walking using tippy toes. Her boobs became six nipples that shifted down to her belly area. And finally, her face, I'm not kidding you, became a wolf's muzzle. She didn't even look like she was in any pain throughout the transformation. The changes seemed very natural to her. I don't even think I heard anything crack. She could still speak and in fact sounded the same but slightly hoarser. So, Yulia, now a grey-furred werewolf, asked, What do you think? Trouble is, I didn't know what to think now that I discovered that Yulia is a werewolf. I was speechless as my jaw dropped trying to contemplate that my girlfriend is this beast. I said, lacking tone, I... Uh, I faltered, but you would do the same if your girl revealed a werewolf form. I said, I just don't know where to start. She sniffed around my house and even sniffed at me. I said, can I ask you a few questions? But before she could say anything, Yulia's muzzle dropped and she put her hand paw in front of her muzzle and said, Oh my god, your scent! I was startled, but humorously replied, Sorry, I haven't applied my mating scent. My thoughts directed to, Am I dreaming? Did she drug me? Am I still on the couch falling asleep? She then ensued, No, it's not wank or anything. It's familiar. And you did say that the wolf mauled you last night. Scared, I said, Uh, yes. She then asked, Can I see the claw marks? Reluctant, I said, uh, sure. 
and I lifted my shirt up. She sniffed around my body, glided her claws across the blood marks on the bandages, and she opened her mouth around my body as if comparing the words to hers. Oh my god, Yulia said. I'm so sorry for attacking you. I didn't know. She continued to whine a bit as I lifted my shirt down. I was shocked that my girlfriend would do this to me. I felt pissed off and distrusted. But I decided to be a good boyfriend and give her a nice pat on her furry head. The head fur was quite cool, but it remains the same length from human form, resulting in a very shaggy looking wolf. She crawled onto my sofa and lay down belly side up. I was now peeved. Why would she do something like that? So I asked her, Why did you mourn me last night? She shifted around and said, Oh, that's something that I was dead to. Befuddled, I said, Dead? She replied, By my pack. The dare was to track down and attack human prey in town. I lingered in your backyard because you looked like the ticket needed to fulfill the perimeters of the dare. I was peeved. Attacked because of a stupid dare? I was astonished. So I said, why would you let your pack take advantage of you like that? She kind of winced and said, oh, you don't know my pack. Imagine a bunch of cocky, snarling frat boys and you're bound to them because they are misguided and need an alpha. I then asked, are they like you? She replied, most of them are, but like two of them are like just regular wolves. I decided to flip on the couch and Yulia moved up as to have her head resting on my lap. My next question was, well, will I end up with lycanthropy or rabies or something? She said, well, that depends on your immunity and the amount of mutagens in the bite. I had a surprised look on my face and she shrugged and said, it's definitely possible, but I don't know for sure. I said, well, it's not a full moon tonight. Yulia responded, the moon doesn't matter. It's just that there's something about that white orb in the night skies that's just irresistible. As she spoke, I could also smell her breath, and it was horrible. So horrible that it made me gag. She said, It's my breast, isn't it? I didn't know that I was going to reveal my secret tonight. I would have freshened up otherwise. I could tell that she was down in the dumps, so I decided to pat her belly where the nipples are. Nervous, I asked, Is this dropping? Yulia said, of course not. That's just something sex-phobic humans made up. But taboos only seem to exist in humans. Not to say blame them. If my nipples protruded out that way, with the human way of mating, are men looking at milk sacs as a sign of fertility, I'd be defensive too. I only became intrigued. Not only did I just tonight discover that my girlfriend is a werewolf, I also discovered that she seems to be like an outsider to humanity. So I had told her, You're responding like you're a bit of an outsider to being human. This is my main form. The form that I was born as. She said as I was gently rubbing her belly. I could totally be human. And in fact, most of life is spent as a human. Even though turning into my human form is a lot more painful than turning back into a wolf. I asked, if being human is so painful to you, why did you choose a human life as opposed to a more natural werewolf life? She said, uh, let's see. Live in a slightly secluded forest community, have the responsibility to raise puppies at 18 and die of cholera at 55? Or live in a town, have babies in my 20s, and live well into my 80s? Feeling slightly depressed, I said, if you're describing cholera, then it sounds like there's some real problems in these communities you describe. And she then replied, Oh, big time. We don't have sewers, so wolf droppings go all over the place, and it's disgust. She stopped and snarled at me, possibly because I started rubbing near the crotch area. I responded by lifting my hands up and saying, Ugh, sigh. She sighed and said, 
It's not anything you're doing. Julia got up and opened my window and started howling and barking at something in the distance. Concerned, I asked, what's the matter? Julia said, that's just my pack jeering at me. Befuddled, I said, I don't hear any howling. Julia responded, that's possibly because you were focused on touching my furry lap. I responded with a hint of fear that this wouldn't end well for me. I said, to be fair, you said that werewolves don't have a concept of groping or equivalent thereof. I was scared. My girlfriend in this wolf form was slightly taller and more domineering. She bared her sharp teeth at me and told me with her black nose almost touching mine. Fair enough. But if you do that again during my belly rubs, I'll feed you to the pack. I I don't know how mating works in her species, but I know from previous relationships to back off. Julia proceeded to sniff around my kitchen and got some hamburger meat out of my fridge and said, Is it alright if I get a quick snack? First off, the sight of a werewolf going through my fridge was unnerving and just everything about it disgusted me a little. I tried hiding it when I casually said, Sure, help yourself. She sat down on my counter and ate the raw meat as I asked, Now, I'm sorry for, uh, asserting myself, so can you tell me more about these communities? After closing her eyes, she described, Small towns in the woods that are made up of a confluence of shacks with a predominant werewolf population. They're not like tribes or anything of that sort, but they still have first world comforts like electricity and relatively clean water. Intrigued, I inquired, if you're so intelligent, then what's the reason for living in the woods as opposed to houses like what humans have? She continued, well, that actually goes back to the days of Hitler, when grey-furred werewolves were seen as being a trait of the lycanthropic alien race. The brown-furred ones, however, the Nazis ruled as more resembling the southern wolves of Yugoslavia. Most browns were sent to concentration camps, euthanized, or taxidermied. A few browns even fled into the forests and mountains, far away from any tyrannical regime. Shoot, some greys that weren't brainwashed by human propaganda fled with them out of empathy. Sport hunters searched for browns to hunt for taxidermy, while the SS searched for greys to send to re-education camps. Even after World War II and all that was long over, we are still quite isolated from humans, even creating our own towns, schools, and post offices. I was then reminded of a secondary school history lesson about how anthros and humans coexisted prior to Hitler's campaign against the Browns. Curious, I asked, so are werewolves collectively offended at the term human rights? She replied, no. In fact, I think back in the 60s, the Federal Constitutional Court ruled that the same rights that apply to humans also apply to animals. I mean, I even registered to vote in this form. There is a minority that think it ought to be changed to sing rights, or simply rights, and that, that, that the term anthro should be changed to furry, but those are just a bunch of cry puppies with nothing better to do. She took the meat sat down on my couch and put her hind paws on my coffee table. Her shifting around my leather sofa was getting little grey furs all over it. It'd be annoying to clean off, but I let it slide. I was also in awe that wolves, or even werewolves, lived in this part of Germany. With this curiosity in mind, I stated, It's kind of interesting. I mean, I have no idea that wolves even live in this part of the country anymore. Ilya replied, where'd you get that? I replied, I just read it off of Wikipedia a few years back. Yulia laughed and said, well, you can't always believe everything you read on Wikipedia. Apparently, I said, after letting her sit around the house for a few, we took a few selfies that I wound up posting on my Twitter. And right when I was coming in terms with my girlfriend the way she is, Things get to a whole new level of weird when she asserts, I recommend you take your clothes off. You'll understand in a few minutes. I asked, what? 
She said, just take your clothes off in case the mutagens kick in. It never happened the night before, but I was still scared that I could end up like Yulia. So I found myself slipping down to my nude body. I was scared and confused, so I asked, I can change back at will like you, right? She nodded her head no. I replied, what? She explained, you see, I can transform because I was fortunate enough to inherit those genes. Even though it's natural to me because I've been doing it for over 20 years, but it won't be for you. You may have my mutagens, they cause the body to change, and because your body isn't quite used to the foreign chemicals, you therefore will have little control over how and when you transform. Willful shapeshifting is something you learn. I went to the bathroom to look at myself in the mirror, savoring the last time I would ever be a normal human. I calmed down a bit. I mean, it's already nightfall, so maybe the mutagens won't kick in, like last night. And just when I opened the bathroom door to get my clothes, I was overcome with the most intense pain imaginable. I felt my hands turn callous and clawed. The muscle shifting was the worst part about it. I would have witnessed more, but everything sort of blacked out. I woke up feeling lethargic and controlled it. I opened my eyes at a waning half moon and Yulia, still in wolf form, said, Hello. I was still hazed and even though it was dark, I lifted my hand to my face and I saw the what looked like black calluses on my palms and a good look at my arm revealed brown fur. I tried speaking but came out odd. I can't really explain it. It was like Kind of a low-pitched moan or something. I also heard people jeering at us. It was barking, but I could decipher it as, Yeah, eat that saw excuse for a meat sack. I double dog dare you. Another howled and someone yelped, I'll give you a hundred euros. The hooligans laughed like fat boys before Yulia howled, Shut up, he's our new alpha, so owe him some respect. The hooligan howled back, a human alpha? What next? False pause driver's license? Another yelped, besides, earlier you told us that he's dinner. Yulia howled back, if you noticed, his scent isn't human. Yulia turned and snarled at me, get up and howl at them. I growled, well, everything hurts. I noticed that just as my body is new to transforming, it's also new to making large wolf tongues move to reliably pull off the German language. It's the fact that my palate is now grooved as opposed to smooth like the palate I had when I was human didn't help matters either. Meanwhile, one of the hooligans howled, It's the 21st century! We don't need a Sire Alpha anymore! Our pack functioned fabulously before! Yulia got me to stand up, but it felt weird standing on what basically amounted to my tippy toes. I held back, Well, we can't still have the Alva. I didn't hear Ferrar Kumarabi Ahuega. Embarrassed by how bad my bark impediment is, I paw muzzled and clumsily walked back into my house. I could still hear the bickling outside as I got a canned soda from the fridge. Is your boyfriend retarded or something? The hooligan howled. Yulia howled back. Give him a break. It's his first time in wolf form. He hasn't even had proper barking lessons. The hooligan howled. Well, he's still retarded. I popped open the soda can with my claw, and drinking it was interesting. It tasted spicy, like a type of pepper or something. And before you ask, no, it was not Dr. Pepper. The bickling continued as Yulia howled. He was trying to howl that I could still be Alpha, he'd take on the role of Omega, you guys would be the Gammas, and Frost Pond Greenbirch could be Betas. After a good minute, the hooligan howled back. Okay, but we need to see him by next moon. Okay, that is in order. Yulia howled back and they stopped howling at each other. But I was in the bathroom, exploring my newfound werewolf body. I filled it about a new werewolf muzzle which is like that of a regular wolf. I could still see full color, which surprised me. 
it thinks that now that I've transformed, I also have the wolf's eyes. But my color vision didn't go away. Then again, I also assume that biologically speaking, that now that I'm a hunter, I'd also be stronger and more agile. But other than enhanced hearing and smell, I felt the same as I did when I was human. I wagged my tail about, rubbed my light brown fur, and did poses to explore my new werewolf form. I proceeded to experiment with my sense of smell, and I was able to smell a multitude of things, from the exhaust of the neighbor's car pulling in, to someone's steak dinner. Speaking of scent, I also noticed Yulia is getting closer to me. She opened the bathroom door and said, That's my pack. What do you think? I figured that I have such a strong bark impediment, I tried speaking again. But it turned out like, there are little urinal who I like, eh? Yulia responded, we'll work on your speech soon. But, uh, I came to ask a question. I replied, what is it? Yulia replied, do you want to mark your territory? I replied, money and I just would smell like north. Yulia said, Yes, I did mark my territory at my house to keep the pack from eating out of my fridge. But my house doesn't smell that way because wolf urine is repugnant. I have bad plumbing that's old and corroded, remember? I replied, so, so, is safe? Yulia responded, yes. And I replied, well, I knew I had to be. We walked outside and I pointed my dingus to a wall outside of my house. I turned my head to Yulia, and she said, Come on, you can do it. It's safe, sanitary, and keeps other wolves from ruining your stuff. I did pee on the wall. It felt natural, yet repulsive. But at least it's protected from Yulia's brand of hooligans. Yulia walked onto my backyard, and I spotted frost on the ground. So I asked, Why non deal cold? Which one agree? She said in a flirtatious fashion as she walked towards me, Because you're wearing a sexy brown fur coat. She turned around, moved her tail as to have a butt crack exposed, and asked, Do you want to mate? I said, Oh, here, yeah. We went on to make love in my backyard. The fields could not be more real. We were in love. She then started letting off a mating howl, and I puffed on her. I couldn't get my sharp teeth together to properly make a shh noise. She then looked at me funny, and I said, It's no one else business! She said, I know it's a little to get used to, but you're not human, and you shouldn't use the human custom of shame and mate. Be proud of your sex life! I skeptically responded, No, no, was. She spanked my back hard and said, Shut up and show me your newfound big bad wolf. We started mating and cuddling like wild animals. It was really pleasurable, even more so than human sex. And the climax, we howled. Yulia howled much louder as she was comfortable mating like this. I was quieter because I didn't want the neighbors to complain. I felt dazed in a way I haven't felt in years. And I even said... Yours the most evil wish I ever wet. I bet you weren't expecting that twist ending, which brings me to the question of the day. If you were in a romantic relationship with someone, what would you do if that same someone revealed a werewolf form? Please give your answers in the comments. If you want to see part one, then click the card on the top left corner. And the intro and outro theme, just like last part, is the love theme from St. Elmo's Fire, as composed by David Foster. Again, props to him. I do not legally own this track, or whatever. And judging by the way, I didn't get a copyright strike on my previous video. Take that, Columbia Pictures, and take that, Atlantic Records. And if you're not around anymore, take that, Sony Music. Anyway, this is Tonstad39, over and out.